What's going on, guys? Tyson Trainer back with another Sports Talk video. Going to continue on the series, what we've been talking about so far. And as you can kind of see, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm kind of building up on the foundations that I've talked about. So we've talked about energy balance and energy availability. We've talked about how to figure out your own macronutrient goals. So the next thing on the topic is going to be micronutrients, okay? So micronutrients are very important for overall health, right? We have a lot of them. We have uh, vitamins, minerals. We have fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins. We have a lot of things in the body that are just we need on a daily basis. And basically, these vitamins and minerals are in quite low doses. You know, They're under the gram mark, so they're microscopic, micronutrients. Um, and we don't need a lot of uh, food to actually get all these things in our day, which is actually good because once we tick off the boxes for our micronutrients and we, tick, like we get everything we need to, it then makes it much easier to fill our plate with uh, usually non-healthy uh, foods, I guess you would say, or high calorie foods, especially if you're someone burning a lot of energy. We can't stick to clean, healthy foods all the time as you'll get gut issues, uh, you'll have digestion issues, same as gut issues, performance issues, and you're just not gonna feel good when you're walking around with a stomach full of fiber all the time because you're getting all of your micronutrients from sweet potatoes and all your protein from lean sources of protein and all your fats from uh, low calorie uh, options like just heaps of avocado. So we wanna make sure we're getting a diverse range of our micronutrients and vitamins and minerals by making sure we're you know eating our plants, eating our protein, eating our uh, healthy fats and stuff like that. But once we hit a certain threshold, then we can make sure that we use our extra calories as we kind of please, especially as an athlete, not steering away from things that are classed as bad. Okay, so basically the way we would start this off is to make sure you're gonna get all of the vitamins and minerals and micronutrients you need, we're gonna to have to tick off a few different boxes, okay? Now the best way to ensure you're ideally gonna get everything you need is by following really basic uh, pyramid guidelines, or well, not pyramid guidelines anymore, just nutritional guidelines based on your country, you know? Because there have been a lot of dietitians who have been put to work, uh, they've looked at the most research, they look at what needs to be covered on a daily basis to ensure that people are getting everything they need, and this is where the recommendations have come from, all right? So it's very simple, things that you probably already know. So firstly, getting five servings of veggies a day. Okay, so when I say five servings of veggies a day, uh, a serving of veggies is 75 grams, which means five times seven is what, four, like five times 75 is like 300 and something grams a day. I think it's 375 grams in total, to be honest with you. So under the 400 gram mark of veggies, which is pretty easy to hit, you know? To be able to get 500, under 500 grams of veggies is like easy as piss. So making sure you're gonna be getting your veggies throughout the day and try and choose different vegetables. We don't wanna just have the green vegetables like broccoli, snap peas, kale, um, peas and things like that. We wanna make sure we're diverse. So you know, what I would recommend for you guys to always try and make sure you're keeping things uh, in rotation is by always choosing different types of vegetables. You know, there are going to be some you just don't like, you don't want to try anymore, and some that are some that are staples in your diet. But we still want to try and keep diversity. So every time I go food shopping, I will look for two different vegetables to try. This week I've got broccolini and eggplant. Next week I might get mushrooms and zucchini. They're not the only two vegetables I'm having, but they're the two in rotation. All right, my three usual vegetables I'll I'll keep in is cauliflower, broccoli. Um, and green peas, like I said before. So they're my three greens that I keep in. Then my two other ones are always just gonna be different colors. So squash, eggplant, mushrooms, uh, beetroot. Anytime you can get more colors, it's gonna have more vitamins and minerals in them, all right? So aim to get that five servings of veggies a day. And it's not hard to get. You can make them taste really good. You can add herbs, spices, low calorie sources or high calorie sources if you're someone who needs the extra energy. So we've got like barbecue sauce, tomato sauce, mayo, soy sauce, uh, all purpose seasoning. What else we got? Uh, uh, Cuban mayo, delicious. If you need the higher calories, you have so many different choices there. You can add in vegetables into your uh, spaghetti bolognese. You can add in vegetables into your mashed potato. There are heaps of different ways to add in vegetables to make them taste good. So you don't have to be boring, you know? Even roasting potatoes, uh, pumpkin, carrot, all those things, broccolini, kale, you know, roasting them is also gonna be valuable too because you're gonna get extra calories from adding on oil and things like that. And you're also gonna get the sodium content from all the herbs too and the spices. So making sure you are trying to aim for that five servings of veggies a day. And again, you know, 375, usually a serving of veggies is gonna be like 20 calories. So 120 to 150 calories a day in total for vegetables, which is basically nothing. Okay, maybe a little bit more, let's just say 200 to be safe. It's not a lot. Plus you're gonna be getting your fiber needs from these veggies too. Secondly is fruit. 
Fruit is just as important as vegetables. Fruit is definitely not bad for you. And being an athlete, you're gonna to wanna to have fruit in your diet for again, the vitamins, the minerals, and the carbohydrate content and the fiber, right? So ideally, you wanna get two to three servings of fruit a day. So between 200 to 400 grams of serving of fruit is gonna be an ideal sweet spot. And just like you would with your uh, vegetables, you'll also try and uh, add in a little bit of rotation with your fruit. So this week I've got green apples and I've got mixed frozen berries. Last week I had bananas and watermelon. So each time, again, try and change it up a little bit. Keep some variety in your diet because the more colors you can get in the diet, the more likely you are gonna be ticking off all those boxes for the most part, okay? So we've got the fruits, we've got the veggies, whole grains. Whole grains are really important, you know? Uh, obviously, darker colors, or dark, so like brown rice, uh, multigrain, rye, all those things are gonna be uh, more higher in vitamins and minerals, I guess you would say, uh, compared to white stuff. So when you have the option, choose the multigrain and whole grain. However, we only wanna have three to five servings a day of these, okay? Ideally with your multigrain, three servings a day, or your whole grains, and then everything else be your faster digesting stuff. So your white rice, your white bread, bagels, crumpets, all these things, these are gonna come from all your extra, like from all your extra carbohydrate sources after you hit two to three servings of whole grains a day. Because with your whole grains, you're gonna be getting your B, uh, your B vitamins, you're gonna be getting a few extra things they add in there, so sometimes they'll actually fortify uh, cereals and grains and things like that with extra nutrients so you can get it all. Then when you've hit that, you've got your, you've got your vitamins and minerals, you've got your fiber again from the whole grains, then you use your white grains to top up your carbohydrates and also help really get through the digestion quite easy without being bloated and stuff all the time, okay? So those three simple things right there are gonna tick off a lot of your habits, all right? Uh, sorry, a lot of your vitamins and your minerals and your micronutrients. So veggies, five servings a day, fruit, two to four servings a day, um, multigrain, two to three servings of multigrain a day and then the rest coming from just other grain sources. Sorry, when I say multigrain, you know, I mean like whole grain, all those type of things, whole wheat, all that stuff. After that, we're gonna move over to calcium. So calcium is a very important thing for an athlete, uh, for bone mineral density, preventing osteoarthritis or osteoporosis, and also helping with muscle contraction too, because calcium actually plays a part in that. So if you are someone who is a vegan or vegetarian, you don't eat a lot of dairy, take a calcium supplement, all right? A thousand milligrams a day is gonna do you well. If you aren't someone who is a vegetarian or vegan and you have dairy and you're not lactose intolerant, two to four servings a day. A serving of dairy is like 25 grams of cheese, 250 mils of milk, one tub of Chobani Greek yogurt, you know, the little small ones or the Yopros or anything like that. That's gonna be your serving of dairy, all right? So making sure you have two to three of those a day. Pretty sure I said two to three. Uh, to obviously hit that uh, 1,000 milligrams of calcium, right? Your vegetables will also have a little bit of calcium in them, which is why we only need two to three servings a day for our actual calcium sources or our dairy sources to get the little bit of extra calcium you get from veggies. But you probably won't be able to hit that uh, calcium goal if it's just all from vegetables, which is something to take into account, again, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian or someone who's just more on the plant-based side of things, okay? So, so far, we've covered your fruits, your veggies, your calcium, your whole grains. Next, we're gonna move on to red meat. I'm gonna say red meat is an essential part of your diet, all right? Again, if you're someone who's not vegan or vegetarian, simply because the matter of the fact is that red meat's gonna contain iron, and iron is an important uh, nutrient for you to have in your body. Not even nutrient, what did I say? A micronutrient uh, in your body. Because at the end of the day, uh, iron's gonna help carry around oxygen in your blood, and if you're low on iron, you're gonna know how bad fatigue is. So one thing you'd also wanna go and get checked is a blood test to check your B vitamins, to check your iron levels, and to check your vitamin D too, because they're gonna be important things to go and check. Just as a side note, but yes, making sure you're getting red meat, I would say two to four times a week, to be honest. I eat red meat like three to five times a week, which is quite a lot, but red meat actually isn't as bad as we think it is, as long as we're a healthy individual, which if you're an athlete, you're watching this, you probably are, and it's not processed red meat. So when I say red meat, beef mints, steaks, um, kangaroo, things like that, they're gonna be your good sources. We don't wanna get bologna or we don't wanna get you know processed uh, red meat that's got the nitrates and stuff in it because they're not good for you in the long term. So when I say red meat, I mean proper actual meat. Steak, kangaroo, things like that. They're gonna be the best choice for you, red meat wise. Then we have our uh, healthy fats like I've talked to you guys about before. So nuts, seeds, um, avocado, uh, fatty cuts of fish, these are all gonna contain not just your poly and monounsaturated fats, but also fat soluble vitamins, okay? So there are, only, there are certain vitamins that we can only transport with, with our fat. So when you actually eat fatty foods and it has some of those vitamins in there, which is your A, your sorry about that, got interrupted for a second. So as I was saying about vitamin A, E, D, and K, these are all gonna come from uh, fat, fatty foods. So making sure when you do eat fatty cuts of fish or um, liver is very healthy for you too. 
be careful with it because some people aren't going to like the taste of it. Um, avocado, nuts, seeds, all these things that are just normally higher in healthy fats are actually going to contain these fat soluble vitamins too. So they can transport the nutrients after you eat them into the body, which is needed. All right. So once you've ticked off these boxes about your veggies, your fruits, your dairy, what else am I thinking of? Healthy fats, protein, I think I've lost one more, and your whole grains, you're basically going to cover all your bases for everything you kind of need, right? Now, something else to think about when it comes to your vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. Like I said before, going to get a blood test is always going to be a good safety check for you because you can't consume vitamin D, all right? And it's still an essential supplement that you need to be having. You can't, as you want to say you can't consume, you can't eat it. You know, some uh, milks, I think over in America, maybe UK too, are also fortified with vitamin D. They're not here. So taking a vitamin D supplement is important, especially during winter months and actually just most of the time of the year. There's only a certain amount of times you can actually absorb vitamin D. And uh, when I say like a certain amount of time, like I think it's between like 10 and 2 p.m. or something, something crazy uh, in the winter months. And then when it's in summer, you kind of have more of an, a range to be able to absorb vitamin D. However, we're probably not spending as much time in the sun because we work in offices and stuff. So taking a vitamin D supplement, very cheap, very good to take. And you know, you take a thousand, one to 3,000 milligrams a day. Go and get a blood check test, uh, a blood test check for that because it'll do your vitamin D. It'll do your B vitamin minerals, especially if you're a vegan or vegetarian again, to make sure your B, uh, your B vitamins are in point. And then also iron too. So they're gonna be your big crucial ones. And I would just suggest to everyone, go and get a blood test every three months to just to make sure everything's firing in the right direction. You don't have high cholesterol. Your um, red blood cells are fine. Your white blood cells are fine. Uh, everything's just on point. It's always good to just double check that. If you get service from your car, you might as well service your body too. It's on Medicare if you're in Australia. It's not that expensive. So go and get a blood test done. Now, uh, carrying on from vitamins and minerals and speaking of those things, some other things to also consider is your sodium intake, okay? If you're someone who sweats quite regularly or you're someone who just puts in a lot of effort uh, being an athlete, you're probably gonna have higher sodium needs than most people, okay? Now, if you do not have any blood pressure issues, you have no issue uh, history of blood pressure issues, still go and get it checked, but ideally you wanna be consuming a fair bit of sodium during the day. So if you're choosing these whole unprocessed foods for the most part, they're not gonna contain a lot of salt and sodium. So you salt or sodium. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to salt your food more to increase that sodium. Especially if you're uh, possibly a female and have low blood, blood uh, pressure issues, increasing your sodium is also gonna help with that too. So making sure you are actually salting your food when you can, using herbs and spices, um, especially like all-purpose seasoning and stuff like that, that are gonna increase that. Soy sauce will increase your sodium levels. Uh, things like that are gonna help. And with that, you're actually gonna notice better performance too because sodium is an important electrolyte. Uh, it helps with muscle contraction. It is actually electrical currency through the body. So we wanna make sure we are utilizing sodium the best we can. And again, if you go and get your blood pressure checked and you have no blood pressure issues, uh, or you have no history of blood pressure issues, increasing your sodium is probably a better amount. And I can't give everyone a specific number, but salting your food is gonna go a fair bit of the way. And you're gonna realize, if you're someone who's cramping or constantly, you know, you feel like, possibly low on energy, lightheaded and stuff like that, it actually could be a sodium issue. So salting your food a little bit more is gonna be important too. If you are tracking your food and you're looking at sodium, also making sure you're looking at potassium. So ideally we wanna have a two to one ratio. So two milligrams of potassium to every one milligram of sodium. So if you're eating 3000 milligrams of sodium a day, you wanna have about 6000 milligrams of potassium. And again, usually it won't be picked up from everything you track online with the MyFitnessPal, but it should track a fair amount where it'll kind of give you an idea about where you're gonna sit in regards to your potassium intake. So making sure you're sitting roughly to two to one ratio, and you're probably gonna notice if you haven't been and you do change that, you're gonna notice a quite a good effect in performance and just feeling overall when you have your electrolytes in balance. Because again, they can play a big part in our body and it's something to uh, just make sure you're taken care of. And honestly, guys, that's about it. To, like when it comes to vitamins and minerals and your micronutrients, like making sure, again, you are eating a healthy, wide variety of foods, a healthy, wide variety of foods, a healthy diet with a wide variety of foods coming from your vegetables, your fruit, your whole grains, your healthy fats, your protein. Uh, that's pretty much going to cover all your bases and it's going to help you tick off all the boxes, you know? Uh, this is how we kind of stay within our recommended RDA which is like a recommended dietary allowance of the foods they actually are, of the micronutrients they actually want us to do. And again, if you're an athlete, you're probably gonna be consuming a little bit over this, hopefully, which means you definitely won't be in a deficiency, but it's always good to go and get your blood check just to double check. So I hope you guys like the video. If you have any questions about it, make sure you let me know. We've covered everything so far. So the next video is gonna be on supplements. It's gonna be about what supplements have actually been proven to work, what they do in the body, and then ones that are just bunk and you don't need to worry about. So until next time, guys, speak to you then.